Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to yet another episode of Perth Podcast, Athlete Things, Road to Worlds 2024, Lithuania. I'm Bobby Tan from Perth Promotion, and joining us today as our guest speaker, we have Andrew Chu. So, Andrew, how hey, are you doing how today? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good too. Thanks. <laughs> Didn't expect us to ask that at the same time. All right. So, a little bit about Andrew. He's coached by Stephen from Performotion since 2021. They've done dozen meets. So, they have a lot of uh, experience working with each other for a while. So, how's your experience working with Stephen been? Uh, it's been really good. Like, my development with him has changed a lot over the last three years. So it's just been really interesting and you can really see the, that being with the coach for a really long time, you can see that change in dynamic. So it's been really good. It's great. I'm glad to hear that you've had a positive experience. So if I remember correctly, you have been working with him since your state qualifiers in 2022, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's been about six comps with that so let's talk about how you did end up qualifying for Lithuania. Uh, a bit more about Andrew he is our Australian powerlifting alliance national champion this year with a total of 639 and it was a very close fight with Yuki who totaled 638.5 where Andrew had to pull 260 to beat Yuki. So, so, the fight itself, how was your prep overall leading up to Nationals for 2024? Uh, overall, it was the same as kind of every other prep. Um, right. I have like a really good couple of blocks leading into that peak block. And that peak block would be really exhausting i think just very tiring um i feel really sore which is very expected in a peak block uh but yeah this time i actually tried to make smarter this de decisions on that final week uh except for my squat that was a really really hard like last squat which i think was 232 and like i was just fighting for it i didn't want to fail that one but yeah like throughout the whole every other block i've always failed something so I think this is like the first time I've prepped where I haven't failed a lift. So I think that was the, the one difference this time around. Right. Yeah. And do you think that was... Um, the deciding fact led to your wonderful performance at Nationals? Or do you think it might have been something else? No, uh, I don't think it was a deciding factor. Um, I think I just wanted to be a little bit smarter because normally... Like I think my last deadlift was in prep was two forty five, um, and knowing me, I would have probably gone two fifty five just to try it, <laughs> just to like really try it and see if I could get it. Um, but this time, <laughs> but this time I was like, nah, I shouldn't, because I'm gonna get grilled for it, because um, it'll probably be like the third or fourth time I would have done it in a comp prep, so I would have definitely been grilled for it. But you know, I played a little bit smarter, just a tiny bit. But yeah, I think it was just um, in terms of the prep itself. Yeah, and the comp, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in terms of just the comp and the prep itself, it was just like uh, I knew it would be there on comp day. Like we've put in all the work and generally based off past experiences, it would just be I'm very fatigued. So getting rid of that fatigue, getting rid of the accessories just seems to always really help me. So yeah. So, what was that pivotal? Because um, you did say that you constantly fail at least one lift, right? So, what was the pivotal turn that made you realize, oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't be failing this. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Um, a little bit. I think I was just wanting to be a little bit smarter because there was a lot more on the line. Right, there was a lot more in line. Yeah. Like even states, I think I failed two fifty five the week, uh, my final heavy week, and I was able to get two fifty six. I think it was, uh, for our states. 
uh, when it was for APU. But yeah, it's just like, yeah. you know, like I was thinking like, is it worth it to push that a bit more? And I could have, like I could have just done it just for fun and hopefully it would have shown up on comp day. But yeah, it's just like, is it worth it getting, um, getting it in the end? And I was just like, probably not. Probably try to be a little smarter. And it worked out. So. Right. It's great. I, I'm glad it worked out. So, regarding Nationals this year, you did beat out Yuki. But to give a bit of context to our viewers and audience, uh, Yuki did take the win at Nationals 2022, two years ago. Enter the following year. So, Andrew, did losing to Yuki Yuki at Nash. Was that sort of a wake up call for you, or how did that um, change anything? I think post comp. I think at that time I knew that I wouldn't be. I wasn't strong enough. I just I knew at that time, um, beating Yuki would have been a bit of a stretch. Like just looking at his numbers and thinking about it, his bench was, his bench is and is still much further ahead of me but I didn't have the gap on him in terms of uh, squat and deadlifts at that time. So it was kind of a do as much as I can. And if he fumbled, then um, I could have taken that win. But obviously he didn't fumble in 2022. And yeah, I think that's like the difference between then and now as well. Back then it was just like, oh, everyone was saying uh, to me that, oh, they're with me they want me to win and stuff like that and it was just like damn i feel this immense amount of pressure in in a sense uh even though like it's just everyone's saying it to me but i should you can't really control outcomes in powerlifting right not not that much anyway you've kind of done the work and because yeah. that work is d- done it's just like okay i'm gonna show up and do as best as i can but everyone was just like saying oh they're with t1 because that's my instagram handle and everyone's like saying that to me yeah yeah, yeah. feeling that immense amount of pressure so yeah so do you feel like the pressure you got from the expectations from your friends your supporters something that you can leverage off of or it's something that you could do less with like i'm grateful for the support 100 percent like but um and I don't think I can leverage off of it. I think it's just that I know that regardless, it's up to the handlers to do whatever they can do to put me into um, a winning position. But me giving it all my all in a comp is just pretty much all I can do. I can't really control that outcome um, in any other way. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So, two, you, how was the post um situation like? Were you and Steve able to work things out and find tune things, which for your qualifiers and states for yeah. Puff Cup, was it? Yeah, I think um, yeah. we figured out most of like what works and what doesn't work. Um, most of the time, bench for some reason does not show up as well in training, but then it seems to show up in comp day a lot better. I'm pretty sure that I failed 145 multiple times in training um, on different days as well, in different blocks and stuff like that. But then every time it's on a comp day, it moves at maybe eight, eight and a half. So, but yeah, I'm just like, I think that's like with all the fatigue of benching five days a week and everything as well. Right. So, um, doing the work and programming aside, would you say that there's been a shift in terms of your mindset after nationals? From 2022? Yeah, for 2022. Uh, I would say so, but it wasn't immediate. I don't think um, my mindset really changed until states 2023 where 
it was like I've always been before that I was always like more of a hype lifter. So I'd have ammonia uh, for squat and deadlift and maybe even for bench as well. Just to just sometimes it really depends. Uh, but yeah, that was like every other comp since Nats up until States 2023. And then because for States 2023, I pretty much ha didn't have any rivalries. So, so for that one, I was actually rather calm. And I think for that one, that was my best performance to date because I was so calm. And then that's what I did leading into um, APA Nats as well. Right. So what made you realize that you don't need the hype and you prefer to be calm? Like when was the pivotal moment for you? Yeah. So like it was States 2023. That was a that moment where that day it was just like, oh, we're just going to go out. We're going to go nine for nine. That was the goal because I think I've only hit one nine for nine comp with Steve. Most of the time it's either I miss something like, um, either a squad or right. a second or third bench something like that oh, yeah and a, and a deadlift yeah. which is like the main thing um but yeah the goal was just to go out nine for nine no hype at all like i don't really use ammonia in training either but i do right. try to get a bit more hype and if anything i was joking around with steve and uh david in the back room so like, like two minutes before going up, I'd be joking around with them. And for states. Th that was like, yeah, for States, you yeah. know, like we'd be making jokes and stuff and I ha I'd have half a headphone on and they're just telling jokes. I'm just like, oi, you're up. And I'm like, okay, just wrap up my wrist wraps or whatever it is, put on my belt and I'm just standing there listening to music. That didn't need anything. So I was like, oh, this is a really good comp. Like this, like reflecting back, that was a really good comp. So I tried to replicate that for Nats as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure it worked out in your favor, right? Because you did great. Yeah, exactly. So like, I didn't need anything at all. I was just listening to music. I was just talking to Kelly. Um, he was hailing me on the day as well. Yeah. So I didn't really do anything different to that. Right. So we did talk about mindset shifts, right? Were you talking about, were you referring to how you handle yourself from comp to comp in terms of hype? Or is there something else where we talk about something more intrinsic when it comes to powerlifting? Like what does powerlifting mean to you? I think it was um, myself from comp to comp. But in terms of like, um, like the meaning of powerlifting, I didn't realize how much winning and that's actually meant to me until after. Yeah, because right. I was like, I really thought that, again, I had that same mentality where, oh, whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to be fussed about it. Um, win or lose, like me or Yuki will either be um, the winner or the loser, and we're going to be both have given everything our all. So yeah. in terms of like winning Nats, that was actually surreal afterwards that i'd actually won my first nets um and yeah that was like the moment where i realized how much actually it really meant to me so tell me more about like like how long did it take for you to set in and maybe tell me more about like what went through your head like how it feels to be a national champion um so steve handled me for that last uh, deadlift. He came in and because of that, like straight after um, we celebrated right away, like it was uh, like the videos out there, I, I was jumping on him, like we were hugging each other. So I was like, holy shit, um, we finally did it. Like after how long, the, in terms of this mindset, like we since I think October, 2022, which was when the Nats happened, um, and it was like, finally, we got to there. And it was just straight after, like, everyone's congratulating me that I was like, oh, shit. It's finally actually happened. Like, it took a while to settle in. But yeah, like, it's happened. Right. And yeah. going into Worlds, how 
you, you've secured your ticket. You've, I assume you've booked your flights. And was this happening in very soon, actually? So yeah. going into Worlds, how, how do you think it's going to be like the experience? It's, it's your first Worlds, so. I think, um, I think if Steve does apply for coaching to handle, he'll push, I'm pretty sure he'll want to go nine for nine again because it is a first Worlds comp. Um, I was looking at the nominations. I don't think 639 will put me in a group, right? Based off it, uh, nominations already. So I think because I'll be in B group, it'll be a little bit more relaxing because I don't, I won't have that complete pressure of, um, eight lifters, 10 minutes and eight lifters, like back and forth. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so I'll have a bit more time, but yeah, with that, I think just trying to place as high as possible, because again, it is my first world. I really want to enjoy the experience. You know, I don't want to do something stupid at all. So I think having fun and trying to go nine for nine will be a really good experience uh, for me. I feel like your goals and expectations for Wolves are very similar to what you achieved in states and nationals. Is that something that you are just trying to um, for like every single comp here on? I think that's always been a goal, um, but I'm fairly greedy. Like Steve calls me greedy. So, <laughs> um, so in terms of that, it's like saying, yes, I want to always go nine for nine because that, uh, we want to try and stack the total. But yeah, it's about just trying to be smarter and hopefully go nine for nine every comp from now on. But yeah, it'll just really depend yeah. on how greedy I feel on the day. <laughs> <laughs> you've went um basically you've went from states to nationals to worlds do you feel like going back to back preps is very exhausting especially when you tell me that um every prep for you is exhausting because you are a lightweight lifter you can recover from heavy stimulus so it takes a toll on you like mentally and physically I think um, I think weight is the hardest thing because normally, like, if it's I was be like maybe 69, 68, 69, but I don't enjoy the feeling of sitting heavy and doing water load and sauna and everything. It's just especially for me because because I'm such a lightweight lifter, I've always competed the morning sessions. Like I'm always waking up at like six a.m. or five a.m. sometimes, weighing in at seven yeah. and then starting to eat again um i'm used to waking up early for work but it's like having to do do the water load and if i had to sauna it wouldn't be it'd be a very stressful like morning so i don't enjoy that feeling mm. but um but in right. terms of like so this comp like i've got a nutritionist now um alex from also perf motion to try and handle that stuff a little yeah. bit better for me working with alex yes yeah, um we started like a week ago so it's trying oh to a week ago up. okay so it was yeah. after that yeah it's after that yeah because steve was like he wants me to sit a bit heavier um leading into worlds and uh, like Hef do yeah. some sort of cut right set a roadmap of maybe what you guys want to achieve by maybe uh, and the end of a certain month or a certain week, like, like what you want to achieve in, and then going into worlds, how you're going to use that to perform well on the world stage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So have you guys set any, um, targets for that? Um, in terms of the nutrition or in terms of, uh, competing. Yeah, nutrition, nutrition. Um, I think I'd be want to sit around sixty eight at most, and then do some yeah. sort of like water cut or um, gut cut into yeah. into the comp as well. Right. So, 
So your expectations and goals, both in training and nutrition for Worlds. So now, um, your Yuki, he has also secured his ticket to Lithuania at Worlds, yeah. which means that this will be your second rematch and your third fight with him. Yeah. So go going to Worlds, do you see him as a teammate or do you still, still, do you still see him as a rival? Oh, that's a good question. I think, I think I would see him as yeah. both still. Like I reckon, on the platform, he'd still be a competitor against everyone else. Like I'd still want a total as much as I can. Um, but I don't think he would be the objective to beat because there's so many other people this time around, um, and the goal would be trying to place as high as possible. So. In a right. way, he's still a competitor, but he's not the only one I'd want to focus on. I want to focus on trying to place as high as I can um, overall. That's great. I, I hope he feels the same way because like you guys going toe to toe at for like so long, it, it's like almost two years. It's like this yeah. Beautiful rivalry it's in Singapore we have as well. Like we have uh, Sing Miao and Wei Tai from Singapore. Like those two, they yeah. always go head to head. Similarly, go head to head as well. And yeah, although exactly. we won't be seeing the Singapore uh, youth 66 lifters give us a good fight as well. And we're really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, tell me more about your roadmap in terms of training. Like, I think we're a little less than 11 weeks out now from the time that yeah, this something, podcast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How, how's, how's training been? Like, do you feel good? Uh, any injuries? Um, training's been really good. Uh, overall been pretty good. My squats and my deadlifts have really started to show up. Um, I think we're four weeks past Nats right now. So they started to like really show up really well. I'm hoping that I can keep this momentum. But in terms of like injuries, um, my shoulder, my left shoulder has been nagging me since before Nats. Um, and it's just been something I've been trying to work on with a physio. So it's just been really annoying to like press heavier loads. Right. Has it, is, does it just affect your bench? Yeah, it's mainly just the bench. Or yeah. lift as well. Just the bench, okay. Um, I, I, I hope you get well soon, man. Like, yeah, I hope so too. Pain, yeah. <gasps> yeah, so going to Worlds, you have this minor, you have this minor niggle, and I, I assume that you, like, a roadmap of how your blocks are going to go leading up to Worlds. So yeah. how, how does it look like right now? Like, do you feel confident that you'll be able to do, put your best foot forward and that's on the horizon? I think that in terms of like travel and um what foods i'll eat i don't know like how that will affect me because i think our total flight to so we're going to sweden first um like a week before and i think that would that's like a 30 yeah. hour travel almost um so with the foods in sweden the 30 hour travel i don't know how that's gonna affect me especially since this is a first international comp and i've never really traveled for 30 hours I think the most I've done is like 15 to Japan or something like that. Uh, so 30 hours will be quite an experience. But then right. once I've kind of adjusted um, from Sweden to Lithuania was only, was less than 10, less than eight, I think. I can't remember the exact um, duration, but I think right. by then, hopefully I'll have adjusted well enough that a couple of hours like that won't be a big deal. Mm. So... How early are you guys flying in so that you can accommodate? Um, pretty much we're flying a week out. So uh, on the 9th of June is when we're flying out. 
and then we should arrive on the 11th or something either the 11th or right. late late 10th has do you know when you're competing uh sunday by the way like for the 66? yeah yeah the sunday right so if we take a look you said you're gonna fly on the 9th yes yeah, so that should so just be like you a on... week before oh yeah, yeah. Slightly, slightly less than a week. Yeah, slightly less than a week. So hopefully fine. that by then I'll have adjusted yeah. within five or so days. Yeah, I reckon you do fine. Yeah, and hopefully not yeah. holding any water and stuff like that. So, I mean, even if you do, like, I'm sure you and Alex can work things out. Yeah, because he's a really good nutritionist. Yeah. Yeah, and we're comp competing fairly late as well, so I've got time to do um, sit in the sauna if I need to, which I've never had to do before. Yeah, because it's really because most times I've just competed <laughs> in the morning. Hmm. Right. Okay. So, have you got your accommodation set up? Uh, since uh, yeah, uh, flights. Yeah, pretty much. Um, got the Airbnbs in Sweden. Um, I just need to do the official hotel because that hasn't been sorted out by the Fed yet. So that's the only thing that's left to do. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I know it's um, a bit far of a stretch, but I do want to ask you about your plans after Worlds. Big plans after Worlds? Like in terms of competing, in terms of taking a break, or like have you gone, have you looked further ahead after Worlds? Um, so after Worlds, i uh, planning to go on holiday with my partner. So yeah. um, I think that will be about a total of three weeks, like break. And I think that will be the longest break I've had from training. Yeah, since I started with Steve. Like, since wow. I started with Steve, I really haven't had a break at all. Like, I'll do states and then back to, on Monday, I'm back to competing. I'll do Nats, same situation. So I think this will be the first time in a long time where yeah. I'm taking a break. But even then, I still want to go to. I'm so I plan to go to Japan, um, and and that way my partner is going to meet me halfway because she's not allowed to take time off. Um, that entire time off work. Right. So we're going to meet um in Japan, and I still want to go Oni Gym because I want um a shirt and stuff as well. So I'm probably going to go there and probably just get a session in while I'm there as well because why not? Yeah, and like just you know. Get some curls done, you know? Yeah, exactly. Get what something is... done. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, and then after that... Um, so, thanks for sharing sorry. with me. Yeah, yeah, please go on. Sorry, um, but yeah, after that, I don't really have any other plans. Um, probably have okay. to do a qualifier soon um, after that. Yeah. Like, maybe plan for a qualifier and then probably back to Nats. I don't think I want to do another international one for a while. <laughs> You don't want to do an international one? Oh, I'm like, I don't really want to because I'm already doing this international one, which is expensive. So right. I don't really uh, want what to What about spend. next year? Oh yeah, next year, if I have the opportunity, then 100%, 100% I'd be down to do it again. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's great. All right. So um, thanks, for thanks for sharing your story and your journey uh, with off Nationals 2024 and how you did qualify the Worlds. So before we end this, I just want to ask you like a few question, questions so like our viewers can get to know you better. Yep. All right. So firstly, what do you do outside of powerlifting? Uh, I'm a teacher. A high school teacher. All right. What do you teach? Uh, mathematics. All right. Is that is that why people call you like sensei? Uh, um, people always say the strongest math teacher as their caption, or the strongest teacher on their on their like right. whenever they repost my stories. So yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> How long have you been teaching? Uh, five years now, I believe. Yeah, five years. Oh wow, that's a long time. Yes, yeah, my fifth year. Yeah, awesome. All right, so um, favorite lift 
Squat bench or deadlift? Uh, squat. Squat. Least yeah. favorite? Oh, uh, I think the bench now. Used to be the deadlift, but now it's, I think the bench because of my shoulder. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> All right. Lastly, um, do you have any like personal pre- pre-lift rituals that like you do like before any lift? Um, not really. I think the only one is I've noticed this, um, at Nats or just like prepping for Nats is that I have to tug the bar twice for deadlifts before I can pull it at least right. twice, just to, just to like get right. that sense of a secure grip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, otherwise right, so... I don't really have a thing. No. Fair enough. All right, so thanks for sharing with me uh, and the viewers your story and journey to Worlds. Nice. And yeah, is there anything else you'd like to say to our viewers before we end it off? No. Leave there. Nah? All right, yeah, we, we keep it short and simple, yeah? <laughs> all right, so thanks for hopping on, Andrew. All right, thank you for having me on. And all the best for us. Thank you. See ya. All right. All right. So this is this once again past athlete things road road to worlds 2024 Lithuania. Thank you.